Hello and welcome to lesson two, part two. Um, we've just added the playable character. So now we're going to look at importing and collecting objects. So for that, I'm going to be using, not that, I'm going to be using Blender. Now I have got both versions of Blender, both an older version and a newer version. There's a reason for this. Um, if you're in the older version of Blender, you can save directly into your Unity folder and it will just be there. The objects there, you can drag it in. But what I've noticed, if you're in the newest version of Blender, those objects aren't importing correctly. So I will just very quickly go over both things. So I'm just going to stick in the original version of Blender for a moment. Um, I'm just going to create a coin. So if I just add a cylinder, it's not going to be anything fancy. I'm just going to do this really quick. At least that's the plan. Um, I've been using the new version for too long now. I forgot where all my tools are. So I'm just going to quickly make a coin um, that direction. I'm going to rotate it up. I'm just going to drag that. In fact, no, I'll leave that in the middle. That's fine. Scale down just a little bit. I'm going to come over, add a material, new, diffuse, give it a bit of a gold colour. If I want to spend more time on it, I could start adding nice textures to it to make it feel more like a, a coin that you might collect in a dungeon. And I'm just going to go file. Save as. Now to prove how this works, if I just go into my tutorial folder, that's not it, that's the wrong one. Up, up, up. So I was in tutorial, assets. Um, I am going to create a subfolder for this. Coin. I'm going to go inside coin, call it coin, save. Okay, so there we go, I've got a coin. Doesn't look great, don't care at this point. Um, I've just saved, I'm going back into Unity and we should see a new folder appear. There we go, the coin folder's appeared, and inside there is my coin, so I can drag. I'm just going to get, give myself a bigger screen to work with. I could now drag this coin into our scene, and that's it. We have now got a coin up there. Um, that's how easy it normally is. Uh, if you're in the older version of Blender, just to show you the, the newer version, if I open to Blender 2.92, I know 2.93 has just been released. Um, Okay, if I do the same thing again, delete, shift A, add mesh, add cylinder, obviously just saw me do this a moment ago, shrink it down, front view, rotate, um, same again, come down to colours, this time I'm going to turn the new, turn nodes off, base colour, again yellow, if I now do save as, again, oh it's not remembered my new one, come back to that. So tutorial 1B, assets, coin, coin 2, save as, if I come back into Unity, there we go, coin 2 is there, but when I drag it on, it's not visible, it's not there. Now that's not a problem, if you're using the new version of Blender, in fact what I'm about to show you is the way you should kind of do it anyway, um, is... Dot blender files are great, and, and it's what I tend to do. However, what we should really be doing is file, export, FBX. This is almost like the standard way of doing 3D models for for gaming. So if I just go, export, yep, that's in the right folder, just check in, export, ex, ugh, can't speak, export, FBX. In fact, I didn't even look at any of my settings, so I'm just going to try again. What's it say? Selected object, is it selected? Yep, I only want selected object. I only want the mesh. Uh, otherwise it will take the camera and lights and everything and then them lights will work in unity which is great if that's what you want to happen let's say you've got a model where it's got lights for eyes or something okay back into unity so now we've got the coin from blender old version the coin blender file from the new version obviously not there and now the fbx file and you can see what it's made up of including the materials so if i drag that in i didn't scale this version down which is why it's that big so that's how you can put objects in. It really is that simple. So if you're not really up on Blender, uh, I would definitely recommend get up on Blender, go and watch some tutorials on that, make your own little objects. Um, so I'm just going to stick with, in fact, I'm just going to use the FBX coin. Now, the other thing you can do is when a coin comes in, if you think, oh, that's way too big, we can click on the coin. We can come to our import settings, scale factor. So I could say, let's scale that down to 0.5. I can just press apply. So if you'd already put, say, 20 coins in your game, that will scale all of them. So you don't have to go through each one individually, so it can save time. Um, okay, I'm going to leave that as is for now. Um, 
Okay, so I'm on the coin. I want to actually create a prefab out of this because I'm going to prefab because I'm going to I'm going to use quite a few of these. I'm going to go create uh, prefab. I'm going to call it coin prefab so don't confuse it um, because that is just a 3D model. We're going to be adding physics to it. We're going to be adding code to it. We're going to be adding some animation to it. So if I drag coin onto the prefab, replace anyway. Um, original I'll do. Don't know why it still keeps jumping back to the window. It's very frustrating. So now I've got a coin we delete that. I can drag the prefab on. So it now knows it's the it's this object we're going to work with. Okay, so just like before, I want to create a script. And this is going to be called coin. So again, like the previous lesson, I'm renaming it before I click anything. So if I put coin... I'm going to call it coin spin. I like my things to spin if you're going to collect them. Um, right, so that's loaded up our code from the last lesson. Okay, so what I'm going to do is it's not load up the actual code that I did want. So I'm going back here, double click. There we go. We've now got our we've now got our blank code. So we've still got move character. We've got coin spin. Um, just like when we did the rotate left and right, I'm using the same bit of code. I'm going to say transform rotate. So this time it's not, well that's bad code in there, no, so I'm not I'm not coding, I'm not spinning on the X and, and Y, I'm now rotating on the Z axis. So if I just press save, I'm going to come back into our coin. Let's just compound that code. Um, coin prefab, I'm going to drag, is it? Oh, cancel. There we go, so our coin is on our prefab, so hopefully when I press play, we should now see our coin spinning. Oops, so that's now spinning, but it's more like rolling, isn't it? So I, I, I'm on the wrong axis, and that's fine. What I'm going to do is go back into our code, and we'll change that to zero, and that to, onto the y-axis instead. Sometimes, if your math isn't fantastic, just experiment, you'll, you'll get there. So now I press play, let's try again. Okay, still not the axis I wanted to spin on. So let's try one last time. Oh, I forgot it right on this one. So I press play. There we go, that's the way I want it to spin. Okay, so now I want some physics on this as well. It needs to have some way of, of knowing you've bumped into it. So I'm going to add a box collider. Yep, that'll do. So it's not a perfect collider. You can, you can see by looking, it's not pixel perfect. And that is absolutely fine. It's good enough for what we need. I want to add a rigid body. Okay, that's also fine. So now it's solid. Um, if, if I press play, is it going to fall through the ground? In fact, I'm going to get rid of that one for the moment. I don't think I do need it at this point. Let's just check. So I should be able to walk into it, but not through it. There we go. It's, it's too solid for me to walk through. Okay, that's good. So now, I could add it to the coin spin code, but I want to reuse code later on. So I'm going to create yet another C sharp script, and I'm going to call it collect um, coin, because I might want to have different values of coins, different values of gems, that sort of thing. So now I'm going to go click back on the prefab. I'm going to drag the coin collect to it again. I'm going to double click coin collect so it opens up. And now this is a little bit different. Um, I need to write a new function. I'm going to ignore those all together. Um, do you know I am going to add something else that I wasn't going to do just yet. I'm going to put float value equals and again this is going to be worth like 10 10 gold pieces or something and that means we can change the value of the of the coin in the actual game world in the scene so i need a new function now fortunately this is built in we just need to tell it to use it um, private void so basically void means when this function is called it doesn't return any value on collision on collision enter. So again, so the good thing about Unity you noticed and, and Visual Studio is as soon as I started typing it auto filled it in. It's put the right braces in, it's put the collision parameter. So if something bumps into this object, into our coin object, it's going to know what hit it. Um, 
Now, there's something I need to do. I'm going to say if collision dot game object dot tag. So what is it called? Is the player okay? Because what I don't want to do is what if a stray AI hits it, or let's say you're throwing weapons around and that hits the coin. You don't want to collect it based on that. So if you physically walk up to it, so if collision dot game object dot tag is the player. We then, at this point, we actually want to destroy it. We want to say destroy this dot game object. So basically, delete this coin from screen. We won't don't see it anymore. We'll do some more later. We'll be we'll be putting some stuff in there that will trigger updating the score, etc. So if I now just press Control S to save again, um, I can now that should work. Actually, yeah. So if I now walk up to this coin. It's not going to work, by the way, sneak preview. I know why it's not going to work. I just want to prove the point. If I walk up to the coin, okay, it's still not going anywhere because he doesn't know where a player. If we click on Capsule, up here we've got tag, untagged. Well, built into Unity is already a player tag, so I just click on player. And now I can press play. It now knows it's a player. So hopefully when I walk up to it, there we go, the coin's vanished, and we can see it's even gone from the hierarchy. What we want to do now is some way of keeping a bit of score. To show how this works, we've got something called the console output. If I just jump into code again, I can put um, debug.log um, dot coin. Just to show that how this works. This is a really useful way of, of seeing how th if what's going off in your game. I use the debug.log a lot. Okay, so now when I walk into the coin, there we go, you can see we've got coin. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I want to keep a way of, of keeping like a master score. So our capsule, our player, he needs some code as well. Um, we're going to create a new script. We're going to call it main game. So this is going to keep track uh, of the main structure of the game and, and who's accessing things. So very quickly, um, I'm going to just open, in fact, I'm going to create a new object, which is going to be called our main game. I'm going to add our main game code onto that object. And then what we're going to do is, so I'm losing myself in what, what the next step is is we want to create how many coins have we collected. So, in fact, before I go any further, um, I'm going to drag this coin prefab onto coin prefab to make sure it has updated the right thing. So now, in our top level, I'm going to put a whole bunch of coins on. So I can put a coin prefab there, one there, one there. Obviously, if we do this properly, we'd lay these out, maybe have them being defended by something. Um, but, you know, I think that's something the head job and rings. So now I've got a whole bunch of coins, and hopefully, let's just prove this works. Into game mode, we're going to collect those coins. So we've got got a coin. Yep, we collect that coin too. Yep, there we go. We, we, we can see it has updated. Okay, so what I want to do is keep track of how many coins have we actually got. So if I'm over in, it's not opened up. So if I go back onto our main game, I want to create a variable that keeps track of how many coins have we collected. So I'm going to have, it's going to be public again. Now it's also going to be static. Static means keep this variable in memory while ever the game is running. It's so that other places can access it. Some programmers out there might think this is really bad that I'm doing very public variables and it kind of is, but it's, I'm sticking with it. So I've got a um, number of coins. So right now we have no coins. What I'm going to do is create a little function called, um, basically that you've collected something. So if I say public static, same reason again, this, this function needs to be available. Basically it means if for some reason you destroyed the script while it was running, um, it would still exist. So play collect. Now play collect, the reason I'm saying play is because later on I'm going to play a sound effect um, that when you collect an object it'll play that little sound. So, void play collect, I'm just going to put debug 
uh, dot log uh, number of coins. Okay, so right now it's not keeping track of it, it's just simply this is number of coins is zero, and whenever we whenever this function gets triggered, it will output how many coins have we got. Because right now I've not got a UI, we just use the console thing. So on our coin collect, I can now put some extra little things. I'm gonna get rid of this one now. I don't really need it. I'm going to say main game. Now I have pressed save. This might not work just yet because I've not compiled it. Main game dot number. Oh, it has worked. That's good. Number of coins uh, plus plus. Okay. So it's now going to add one. So plus plus in C sharp and C plus plus and Java etc. Means just add one to number of coins. So now. I know I've got this value, we're going to use that much later, so we can have different value gems, and therefore we'd obviously have a, a tracker of that as well. So main game dot number of coins plus plus. And I'm also now going to say uh, main game dot play collect. And this is just because it's going to trigger the sound effect. Um, there's a reason I do it in a different function, um, because when we destroy it, it's going to sort of update coins play the collect function, and then destroy itself. If you played a sound effect here, and then destroyed itself, it would destroy before the sounds even had a chance to come out of your speakers. I learned that the hard way. So now, back over into Unity. And hopefully, this should all be working now in our console. We're going to press play, and we should be able to see our number of coins going up. So we've got one coin. Two coins. And you sort of get the picture now. So we will, have, of course, make a proper UI for that. Um, but that's that's all we really need. So I'm going to stop this lesson there. You've now got enough to create a game that will look a lot better than mine. Maybe make some more time and effort over the over better coins or gems or other objects. Um, now, okay, so I will create a link where you can show me what you've created because I'm looking forward to seeing what you make with this. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.